Trubisky, you ain't know what he's been saying, family. So, so you've been listening to what he's been saying. All right, so what did you hear that he read? That's what I'm asking. I don't. Please. All right, so can we? You, you mind if we elaborate or expound a little more, one on one? All right, check this out. All right, all right. Give me through around me 2015. So the brother was going into it to how the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans were God's chosen people on earth today. You understand, brother? So what about the re something out the Bible? Right, you heard of Moses before, right? You heard of Moses? So Moses dwelt in the wilderness with the children of Israel for 40 years, right? And the Lord established a covenant amongst them and them only. We can agree. So let's see what some of this covenant uh, uh, consist and, and, and actually says, right? Bring it up. This is the book of Deuteronomy, 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses, all these what? That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right? So the Lord is saying, you understand, to the Israelites. some of the punishments that will happen to the children of Israel if they don't keep or follow his rules, right? They're just like your parents. If you disobeyed your parents, you got your ass whooped, right? You got your ass whooping, you sat stood in the corner, you know what I'm saying? Some people kneeled on rice, right? We all had different punishments, but nevertheless, we had a set of rules to follow, right? So let's see some of the Lord's punishments. Right, verse 16. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. So the Lord's saying, curse shall I be in the city, and curse shall I be in the field. Now, Elder, when you look at all the major cities in America, right, LA, Chicago, right, New York, Boston, Miami, who lives in the lowest conditions or the lowest estate amongst all of these major cities? People of color, right? Who fills up the projects in the ghettos? People of color, EBT, Section 8, with welfare. Right, that's us, right? Majority us. So it said, curse shall I be in the city, Right, it says, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Now, what nation of people was cursed in the field? Picking cotton, sugar cane, tobacco. Right, what nation of people does this fit? What cur who fits this curse? People of black people, right? Also Hispanics and Native Americans, right? Because they was doing it prior to us, believe it or not. Okay, but nevertheless, it says, cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. And we, and you said, people of color fit this first curse, right? Let's jump to 48. Two more curses. Verse 48. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So the Lord is saying that these curses are going to be like a sign. When you see a stop sign, what do you got to do? When you see the light turn green, what do you do? So those are signs, right? They're telling you what to do. These curses are signs as well to show who, who the children of Israel are today. Copy? All right, read on. Because thou servest, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. And who? Thine enemies. More time. Thine enemies. Which the Lord shall send against thee. So the Lord is making it clear that his chosen people, which are the Israelites, have enemies. So can God love everybody or be for everybody if his chosen people have enemies? Can he be? Does it make sense to be? If, if yes, if yes, son, if yes, son has an enemy, would you be cool with that enemy? With your son's enemy? So now hear what I'm saying. God, give me Exodus 4 and 22. Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. This is the book of Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son. Read it again. Israel, Israel is, is my son. son. Everybody. Israel, Israel is, is my son. son. Yeah. Even my firstborn. Back to Deuteronomy 28. So, the children of Israel are the most like God's son. 
And now if his son got enemies, do you think the Lord would be cool with his son's enemies? That's why I asked you that knowledge. So now it says, and the Lord shall send a, 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 a enemies against them. You understand? Now, do you think the Lord is dealing with these enemies? Yeah, as, a, as the same way he's dealing with the children of Israel. Absolutely not, right? Read on. Let's, let's read on. Therefore, thou shalt serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. So in everything you want, when you're hungry, when you're thirsty, you gotta go to these 500 fortune companies, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Walmart, Stop and Shop. Who owns these, these uh, uh, 500 million fortune companies? Who owns them? What nation of people? No sugar coating up here, Elder. I mean, I know who owns them. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. And who's the wealthy and the rich? Brother, I don't know who you're talking about, brother. You need to say it in the mic. Who are we talking about? I'm not going to classify it. They know who they are. Brother, why aren't you gonna classify it? Give me Jeremiah 1 and 8. Give me Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 8. Why are you gonna clarify it? I mean, why aren't you gonna classify it, brother? What you scared of? I don't know, brother. To me, I, come, I, I, I sense a little fear. My, 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 my spidey senses is tingling. You see what I'm saying? Hear this scripture. Hear this real quick. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 8. No. Be not afraid of their faces. Read it again. Be not afraid of their faces. Don't classify. Be not afraid of their faces. For I, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. So the Lord saying, be not afraid of them. There ain't nothing to be afraid of because the Lord is going to deliver you in the day of salvation and the day of destruction. We got to figure out who you talk about, other, because I don't know who you're talking about. So who owns these $500 million fortune companies? Other what nation of people, man? No, brother. This is a country. What nation of people? There's 18 different nations. What nation of people own everything in America? Yeah, you know who other? White man. Yes, How do you hear you? I can't, I'm not here to classify Who are the ones that are in this world? Who rules the world? Who rules the world? How many families rule this world? I don't know. That's the matter. White. That's right! You said what? White. What? Right. right! That's right! the most high. Right? So, that's my homeboy, bro. Right. We know, we know, Elder. You just gotta see on that test if you're gonna pass. <laughs> it took you a minute. But you passed, right? So nevertheless, it says that it says that we gotta go to our enemy when we're hungry and thirsty and, and, and naked. I want you to see Meaning when we want all this food, when we want food, the government, when we want water, Gatorade, Dasani, who owns these things? So the white man. When we want some clothes, right? we gotta go to the white man to get shirts and pants and shoes, no matter what. You understand? So that's what it's saying. This is part of the curse. We're still reading curses placed upon Israel for breaking God's rules, right? Let's read the rest of the same curse. Oh, Salah, you can throw it on the 2848. Right? Because it's not the same Salah here. Because right now we're reading a different curse. Now, I believe there's 40 something curses within Deuteronomy the 20th chapter. We're only reading you three. So we're still reading number two. Bring it out, King. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Bring it out! Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Who's our enemy in this context? How many times do you want me to say, bro? Well, I want you to say it one more time. Okay, white man. All right, all praises. The white man. Read on. <laughs> in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So when you want anything, you got to go to this white man. Read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron. Shall do what? And he shall put a yoke of iron. What is the transatlantic slave trade? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. So the Lord is saying that his chosen people would go and change his shackles and be enslaved for being disobedient to God. Now what nation of people did this happen to, brother? Who was in chains and shackles? 
African Americans, right? We were in chains and shackles. Same with right. the so-called Hispanics and Native Americans. Right. Where we were all in chains and shackles under this oppression and subjection under the so-called white man. Right. For breaking God's laws and his rules, right? Let's read one more, brother. Right, let's, you already know what we want. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. Check it out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So what were the Israelites doing in Egypt during the time of Moses? It was slaves, right? So when the Lord says he's going to bring us back into Egypt, he can't be talking about physical Egypt because he destroyed it. So what is he talking about in this context? Yeah, right. Yeah, you, you, you're not wrong, Elder. But if he says he's going to bring us back into Egypt, well, back into what? Yeah, this right. spot, That's exactly what it's saying. He's going to bring us back into slavery if we break these commandments. Now, how did your people get to the United States of America? Source of transportation. Right? What, what source of transportation? By a ship, right? All right, read it from the top. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. And what is Egypt? Yeah, in this context. You just said it, Elder. Bondage, right? So the Lord shall bring thee into bondage again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. With ships. With what? With ships. On a plane? With ships. We swim? With ships. So this was prophesied 4,000 years ago, Elder, that one nation of people on the entire planet would go into slavery via slave ship for not keeping the laws of God. You following? Now, if the so-called African Americans, Hispanics, and Native Americans went into slavery via slave ship, and the Lord said this would happen to his chosen people, the Israelites, who must we be today? The chosen people, right? That's right. Which are who? What does the Lord call them? Yeah. Because that's, because uh, black, Hispanic, these are, uh, uh, the terminology our oppressors placed upon us, which is why we say so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American. But what is the, what does God call us? The children of who? Uh, Lost Chucks. Now for Come. Now for Come. It, this isn't told at all, brother. We had to go in the Bible and dig this out. And all the churches that be around, all the, all the church, like it, all the churches that be around, all the pastors, everything that, that be going on, you understand? And we still don't know who we are today, man. So check this out, brother. Read the rest of this. So we're going to read the rest of this verse. Listen to this, Elder. We're going to go into slavery again via slave ship, right? By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning we're never going to see our homeland again. Elder, where's your homeland? Not here, brother. It ain't here, right? Read on. We're going to show you where it's at. Give me uh, Galatians 4.26. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 4, and verse 26. But Jerusalem, but where? But Jerusalem, America. But, but Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Right? So Jerusalem is your homeland. Give, give me two minutes, I'm going to deal with you, all right? Give me two minutes. It says Jerusalem is free and, and above, which is the mother of us all. Meaning this is our homeland, King Israel, Jerusalem. Right? Let's go back to Deuteronomy 2868. Last verse, well, should go, right? So, let me read the rest of this last one, and I got you. Last, 2868. So we just read, well, do you remember the first curse? Cursed in the city, cursed in the field, right? You remember the second one? We gotta go to our enemy and one of all things, which is who? White man. And they also would put us in chains and, and yokes of iron, right? 
the last one we just read was what? That will go into slavery, how? A source of transportation. By a boat, right? And this was documented 4,000 years ago. So we're going to read the rest of this curse and see what else it say. Read on. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. What's your homeland? Because it said you'll never see it again. We just read it. Israel, right? Read on. And then ye shall be sold. Ye shall be what? Ye shall be sold. We were going to be sold unto your enemy. So our enemy, which is the so-called white man we got into, right? Read on. For bond men and bond women. For what? For bond men and bond women. For slave men and slave women. Now, were we not as black, Hispanic, and Native American slave men and slave women? Was this not real history? Did this not really happen? So, once again, if God said this would happen to his chosen people who are the Israelites, and we fit every curse that we just brought out, and no other nation could fit it, who must we be? The chosen ones. And what's their name? Who are they? The Israelites. All praise the most high, okay? Wow. Right? So I'm going to give you one commitment and let you go. Is that okay? All right, give me Exodus 20 and 8, classic. Great book of Exodus. The mighty book of Exodus, man. Right? Got a prince over here. Hey, looking sharp, King. Man. You looking mighty, King. Got a, got a minute, King? You got a minute? The book of Exodus, chapter 20. Hey, Elder, listen to this real quick, Ken. This is, the, this is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Do you, do you know what the Sabbath is? This brother's on fire. This brother's on fire. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day. Wait, it's the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Right. In it shall thou shalt not do any work. So you can't work on the Sabbath. It's from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. So you can't work. You nor anybody that dwells within your household. Exactly. Worshiping the sun god, man. That the Roman Catholics put together. But nevertheless, Saturday, which is today, Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, we can't work. We can't buy or sell what you read in Nehemiah, the 10th yeah, chapter. Just, just read some verses on the Sabbath, Ex Exactly. That's on the whole world. Ex exactly, brother. Exodus, the 16th chapter, explains to you that you should prepare your food and don't cook on the Shabbat. And Exodus, the 35th chapter, says that you can't kindle a fire within your habitation. So when you go to these separate uh, 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 ch book chapters, books and chapters, it will define you how to keep the Sabbath properly, right? One more, one more. We're gonna give you one more. Give me uh, numbers to fifteen thirty-eight. One more. You already knew that. <laughs> you already knew that, man. Right? We're gonna give you another one. What's one thing you see every brother up here that got in common? One, two, three, four, five. The cameraman, six up there. Right? Well, you see what we all got in common. Huh? <laughs> I love this brother, man. We're gonna tell you, right? Let's see what the what the, see what the Bible says. He ain't lying, though. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Bring it Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak to everybody. Speak unto, unto the, the children, children of Israel, Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. And that they put upon them, wait, and that they put upon the fringes of the border a ribbon of blue. A what? A ribbon of blue. Now look around again. Uh, see? All we gotta do is read. So these are fringes, Elder, right? And, we, and no matter what, you know, we got the same shirt on. This brother got all blue on. That brother got a nice rose gold over there. Right? This brother got black. You can get him in any color, brother. But you always got to have a ribbon of blue on. Right. Right? And we're going to show you why. Read on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments. And do what? And remember all the commandments. When you look at your fringes, it's to remind you to keep the commandments of the Lord. Read on. Of the Lord. And do them 
What? And do them. It's plain. That's it on that. Right. So you gotta look at your fringes. Remind yourself about the commandments and keep the commandments, King. Okay? So this is a commandment to keep the commandments. You understand? Hey. All right. You got a flyer? You got a flyer? All praise to the Most High. That brother over there is gonna give you a flyer. All praise me. All right, man. Right? What's going on? How you feeling, man? Nice spring day. You don't remember us? Barely? All right, I got a question for you. How do you feel about this, man? How do you feel about that? See all these pictures, man? You know it was your ancestors that did that, right? How do you feel about that? Not proud? Not proud of it. Now, you understand that you're the direct descendants of the slaves, and we're the direct descendants of the slave masters. I mean the slaves, and you're the direct descendant of the slave owners. We can agree, right? So now, it was your ancestors that forced our ancestors to this land. And here we are 400 years later, still trapped in a place that we never wanted to be in. Can we agree? You even got an outcast shirt on, man. Of course I noticed, that's my people on there. You see what I'm saying? But nevertheless, the point of the matter is, you could apologize on behalf of your ancestors, would you do it? You would? Can I show you according to the Bible how to do that? Uh, First Samuel 2. First Samuel chapter 2. Samuel's chapter 2 and verse 3. Talk no more exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is God, is a God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. Just say I'm sorry. And by him actions are weighed. So the Lord is saying you can't just talk and say you're sorry. There's an action that comes behind what your ancestors did because for over 400 years this was an action. See what I'm saying? This was an action. You didn't just say you was going to put us into slavery. You didn't just say you was going to put us in chains and yokes of iron. You didn't just say you was going to put a knee on our neck, right? You actually did it. See what I'm saying? So the Lord is saying the same thing in return. He requires an action from the same people who raped, robbed, and murdered his people and kept us suppressed to this very day. So are you willing to do an action to show that you're sorry on behalf of your ancestors? What? Well, all praise to the Most High. Right, let's get that. First, give me Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 19. Let's, let's, let's maneuver around a little bit before we get to the, the shoddy. The shoddy with the body. All right, do you like that? All right, listen to this, man. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 14, verse 19. The evil bow before the good. Read it again. The evil bow before the good. It's the transatlantic slave trade. The evil bow before the good. Read on. And the wicked at the gates of the righteous. And the what? And the wicked at the gates of the righteous. So what God is saying, he's saying, because he calls your people the wicked, according to Malachi, the first chapter, because of what they've done to us, and Job, the 21st chapter. So... What the Lord is saying is the wicked bow before the good. So the question is, would you be willing to bow down to every brother up here to show your sorry on behalf of your ancestors? You willing to do that? Are you? Are you that? Would you humble yourself to that level? Like, because your ancestors didn't do it. They was proud, but you said you don't want to be proud. So are you willing to humble yourselves and bow to the men of the Lord on behalf of your ancestors? You are. All praise, but don't. So you can start off by getting on your knees, but we're gonna read the rest. But Isaiah 49:23. 
but Isaiah chapter 49 and verse number 23. Bring it out, King. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 23. Bring it out. And King shall be thy nurse and father. Read it again. And King shall be thy nurse and father. Read on. And their queens thy nurse and mothers. Read on. They shall bow down to thee. They shall do what? They shall bow down to thee. What the Bible say? They shall bow down to thee. With their what? With their faces toward the earth. And do what? And lick up the dust of thy feet. And do what? And lick up the dust of thy feet. So the Lord is saying, if you're sorry on behalf of your ancestors, what you're going to do is you're going to bow down to every man up here, right, that your ancestors were involved with the rape, rob, and murdering, and you're going to kiss their boot. Are you willing to do that? You are obligated. That's what God said. That's what the scripture said. Uh, you can start off with this brother right here. Get you some. Get you two, huh? Get the old school get some. They don't want none of that. Number one. Come on, King. Come on, King. Now I want you to kiss mine on this poster because while you kissing my boot I want you to see what your ancestors was doing to mine while we was kissing yours. Right? Yeah, you got it. This one too, man. For my wife. Oh, you're not going to have to sit by yourself. Alright, you can stay right there. Don't move, don't move, man. I got some judgment for you. Hold on. That's some judgment for you. Give me the book. Good, you got it. Give me the book of Numbers chapter 24. Start at verse 19. Bring it out. It's the book of Numbers chapter 24, verse 19. Bring it out. Verse 18. And Edom shall be a possession. Read it again. And Edom shall be a possession. Seer also shall be a possession for his enemy. And Israel, and who? And Israel shall do valiantly. Shall do what? Shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion. Yeah, I was shy, right? With a word ignorantly calls Christ. And shall destroy him. Shall what? And shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, when he what? And when, when he, he looked, looked on Amalek, Amalek, he took up his parables and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perished forever. That he what? That, that he, he perished forever. No, just for a day. That, that he, he perished forever. We over die at chapter one and verse nine, right? Because there's a thing. So God says that your people got to pay for what they did. You can stand up now. You can stand up. I ain't going to make it, you know what I'm saying? Just, hold, just wait till I'm finished. God says there got to be a, uh, a, a recompense upon the people that did this to his chosen people. He calls us his firstborn. He calls us his son. He calls us his beloved. If somebody took your son and did all these atrocities to your kids, how would you feel about it? It would hurt you, right? You wouldn't even know how to feel. You wouldn't know how to feel if you seen a group of black men take your kids from your house and put them in chains and beat them, rape their wives, rape your wife. You wouldn't like that. You 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 wouldn't feel good if that happened to you, right? Done. So nevertheless, that's what we're trying to get to you to understand. Now God, He's a God. He's a God of revenge. Right? Give me Nehemiah chapter one and verse five. But we're gonna show you who the God of the Bible is. Is He all love? Is He all kisses? Right? Is he all rainbows and lollipops? Nah. Let's see what God said. Right? Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse number 5. It's the book of Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Bring it out! And said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God. The what? The great and, and terrible God. God. Loving and kissing God. The great, great and, and terrible God. God. Our God is great, but he's also terrible as hell, man. Yeah, I fear my God, man. You understand? I'm scared of my God. 
It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God in Obadiah chapter 1 and verse number 9, man. Right? Because the Israelites ain't the only ones out here getting judged, man. Right? Esau got his judgment. All these damn devils, read them. There's the book of Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 9. No. Now, and they, mighty men, old demon, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Maybe what? May be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee. Shame shall what? Shame shall cover thee. And thou shalt be cut off forever. For death. Forever. For enough. Forever. The Lord said he's cutting off the so-called white race forever after a thousand years in the kingdom of heaven. And if any so-called white man, woman, child got a problem, take it up with Yahweh Shem Right. I'm just a messenger. Right. I'm just reading right, what's right out the Bible. And God hates white people. Right. You understand? He hates them. Did you know that? You was never told that? Give me Romans 9 and 13. God hates white people. And when white people hear that, they, they can't believe it. But you know why? Because they've never picked up a Bible and read it themselves. Right. They regurgitate what the Christian church teach them in John 3.16 all the damn day. Right. But let's see what the Bible says about white people. Bring it out. Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. Bring it out. Say, what do you say? Absolutely. You didn't know that? No, God don't like white people. Hey, listen to this. This is the book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 13. As it is written, as it is written in Malachi the first chapter, Jacob, have I love? Read it again. Jacob, have I love? What the Lord said? Jacob, have I love? The Lord loves Jacob, the so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans. Read on. I'm not saying nothing. I'm reading the Bible. But Esau. But who? But Esau. What is this woman? But Esau. What is that woman? But Esau. What is this man? But Esau. Have what? Have I hated? Have I what? Have I hated? What did God say? Have I hated? Hey, God said he hates Esau. God said he hates Esau. And y'all mad at me for reading straight out the text. Who are we? We the Hebrew originals of the Bible, man. Are we waking up back to our true estate, putting curses upon you nations, bringing our people back to their true estate. Right. You understand if you got a problem, damn deal with it. Right? Give me the book of uh, 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 Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 12, man. Right, give me Isaiah chapter 16 and verse 12. We don't get... Come, come talk to me instead of her. She don't even know what she's talking about. She don't even know what she's talking about, man. Isaiah chapter 16 and verse 12. They mad at me because what God says. Hey, y'all been taught a lot. It's the, it's the book of Isaiah chapter 16 and verse 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve Thee. Read it again. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Shall what? Shall perish. One more time. Shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Shall be what? Shall be utterly wasted. That little old rinky dinky old white woman. Hey man, this goofy looking Edomite man. You understand? Any of these Edomites, you understand, who think it's a joke and don't want to serve us, the Lord said they're going to perish and be utterly wasted. Right. Be utterly destroyed. Out of existence, not once but twice. You understand? And hey, man, this is it's not my fault, man. You understand? You want me to show you why? Hey, hum Humpty Dumpty got something to say. You said you want me to show you? Give me um, Romans 9 and 11. What I got you holding? Give me the book of, uh, before you get that. Give me Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 15. You better come over here. It's a book. Of Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 15. Yeah. And I am very sore, displeased with the heathen. With the who? With, with the, the heathen. heathen. What is Esau? With, with the, the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased. And they helped forward the affliction. They did what? They, they helped, helped forward the affliction. affliction. What the heathen do? They helped help forward the affliction. affliction. The so-called white man helped forward the affliction of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. They helped and made it so hard and made our oppression so rigor. And then they're walking around here at ease like nothing happened. Right. And then they get surprised when they hear God hates them. 
Right. Make it make sense. High out and slave a whole nation of people, rape, rob, and murder them for hundreds and hundreds of years, and think there's no recompense or no judgment coming your way. The fact that y'all think y'all gonna get away scot free for that, y'all delusional. Right. The Lord calls you a rubber break in Romans, the first chapter. Oh, fuck, uh, excuse my language. A damn bug out. You see what I'm saying? Bring that out, King. Okay? It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, hey. verse 13. Look it out! There. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our father have inherited lies. Surely what? Surely our father have inherited lies. Wait, God hates white people? Surely our father has inherited lies. Hey, hey y'all inherited lies from your ancestors, man. Right. Y'all wasn't told the truth in church. Right. Y'all wasn't told the, the truth in y'all cribs, man. Right. But y'all inherited all the damn lies upon the face of the earth and believed it. Give me Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 9. Bring it out. And give me Revelation 12 and 9. And once again, it ain't me. This is straight up the Bible. Right. Y'all just don't got the understanding of the spirit to even break these things down to understand that y'all the wicked of the earth. Bring it up. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. Bring it up. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. That what? That, that old, old serpent. serpent. Called the devil. Called the what? Called the, the devil. devil. Read it again. Called the, the devil. devil. And Satan. And who? And Satan. So it's called the dragon, the serpent, the devil, and Satan? Read on. What else? Which deceiveth the world. Which what? Which, Which deceiveth the, the world. whole world. What does the so-called white man do? Which, Which deceiveth the whole world. world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. His angels were cast out with him, man. Hey, y'all gonna be cast out again during Jacob's trouble when Yahweh Shai cracks that sky, man. Right. You understand? So, I ain't gonna hold you too much. You know what I'm saying? You got your judgment. You know you, you know what it is. It's every time you see us, you just know you gotta bow before us. Let's save the Lord. Let's save the Holy Bible, man. You understand? You gotta understand. And you gotta understand who the hell we are because we not dumb niggas no more who can't read, man. We not dumb niggas anymore just on the corner all day and night. We know we kings and princesses upon the face of the earth and we royalty and rulers. Give me the book of Second Ezra, chapter six and verse number nine. Bring Give me that Second out. Ezra, chapter six and verse nine, man. Right, because y'all kingdom is it's over. It's literally done. Right. Bring it up. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter six and verse nine. For Esau is the end of the world. Read it again. For Esau is the end of the world. It's the so-called white man. For Esau is the end of the world. Read on. And Jacob is the beginning. Of it that follow it. Hey man, and we the beginning that follows. So y'all can have this temporary world, man. Give me Job 924. Give me Job 924, man. Give me Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Right? Y'all gotta understand, right? That y'all kingdom is crumbling. Right. You understand? Bring it up, King. The book of Job, chapter 19, verse 24. Get out. So the children went in and possessed the land. And thou subduest before the it's the book of Revelation chapter two and verse ten. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Fear none of the things which are soon to come. Speaking of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. The what? The devil shall cast some of you into prison. Hey man, you got Providence police swerving. KP when they see the Israelites out. Huh? Right. Why? Because they, they waiting to cast us in the prison. They waiting for us. They waiting for a scuffle to break out. They waiting for a shoot to pop off. To blame it on us, man. Right. Just to say it was them niggas down there with the speaker and the camera and all the smoke poisoning people. You understand? And they're gonna be the ones casting us in the prison. And the Lord calls them the devil, man. Bring, bring that up. This is the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. No. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Read it again. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Right, and y'all, the wicked were this earth. We just declared and addressed that the wicked was the so-called white man. You understand? The so-called white man is the wicked that the Bible speaks of in Malachi, the first chapter. I'm not saying it. The Bible's saying it. You understand? What? Go on now. You know what I'm saying? You could you could shoot, flee. You know what I'm saying we're done with you. 
tired of talking about, I can only talk about the wicked for so much. I can only talk about the wicked for so much. Give me Isaiah chapter 9 and verse number 16. Give me, give me Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 3. Ezekiel 13, 3, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse number 16. That's just what happens when our people get led astray. Even the heathen are getting led astray. Even the heathen don't know the truth. Right. You understand, but this is exactly what the Bible tells and warns us about false pastors, false prophets, right? Going in these damn churches, giving them all your money because they're not reading up the Bible. We're not asking for a penny. Right. We don't want nothing for y'all but to keep the commandments. That's all. That's the reason why we come out here. Right. It's for our people to keep the commandments so we can get the hell up out of here and go back to our home man. Right. Not staying the one that we were forced and brought to. Oh. Isn't that okay? It's the book of Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 16. Bring it out. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. Read it again. For, For the, the leaders, leaders of this people, people cause them, them to err. And they that are led of them are destroyed. Hey, and if you continue to follow these false prophets, these false pastors, religions, churches, you're going to be destroyed. All right? Give me Matthew chapter 22 and verse number 29. Right? Because it says the leaders of these people cause them to err. What does it mean to err? You understand? Where do they get this understanding from? Right? If they tell you to follow a wrong, uh, 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 follow the wrong group or the wrong crowd, that's what we was told in the world by our parents. Don't show it the wrong crowd, that something bad is going to happen. It's the same with these pastors. They lead you astray. It is what it is. The Lord still got to cast his judgment, whether you know or not. Right? Just because your kid doesn't know it's going to get burnt on the stove, it isn't going to prevent you from touching the heat. You see what I'm saying? A baby gotta learn to get burnt first to understand that's the judgment from touching a fire. Bring it up, King. Okay? It's the book of Matthew 22 and verse 29. Yeah. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err. Ye do what? Ye, Ye do, do err. What do the pastors call our people to do? Ye, Ye do err. Not knowing the scriptures. Not knowing what? Not, Not knowing, knowing the, the scriptures. scriptures. Know the power of God. Know the power of God, man. Our people don't, our people earn, they have no understanding of the scriptures. So when they hear these passages say, hey, John 3, 16, and then they start talking like this, they start reeling you in, man. That's them seducing you. I'm going to chop it up with you, brother. I'm going to teach you. Come talk to me. Why not? What's Africa's real name? I can't give Africa's original name because... No, 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 no. Oh, I see it. Oh, bro, I just told you I don't know. Ethiopia. What you want me to say? Right. Truthfully, if you want Africa, me to... Africa, Are you sure? Yes. What was it called before that? Do you know what it was called before that? No, it's not. It's, it's actually... It's, it's actually told us... Hold on, I got you. You asked me a question. Can I answer? You never tried to talk to me. You just said they're looking crazy. First off, the name really? Africa didn't come until Leo Scipio Africanus. Second, the Lord actually called the land of Africa the land of Canaan before that any type of Africa anything was involved. Be smiling, like so, be you would have to deal with it. It's called the, it was actually called the land of Canaan. Two, you're not from that entire continent. That don't even make sense. You understand? First off, go to so what would be your nationality? Well, are you an Israelite? No, I'm not. What's your nationality? So what's your nationality? We don't know. Hold on, I'm asking you, what's your nationality, though, bro? Listen, we're not going to deal with you or hear you if you're not hearing me. That's not how this works. You don't come on the platform and take over and do what you want, man. I ask, All I ask you, what's your nationality? You can either tell me if you know or if you don't. I'm trying to deal with you. So what's your nationality? Do you see yourself on this? On, do you see a flag on here? And you keep saying, I know, I know, I know, but you're not giving an answer. This goes even further. This goes even further. Nothing back. goes back further, brother. And the 12 tribes of Israel. Nothing goes further back, brother, than the 12 tribes of Israel. We the foundation and the salt of the earth, brother. Right. What you mean? There's nothing that goes further back than an Israelite man. Right. Than an Israelite woman or child, brother. So I'm trying to figure out where you even coming from. It sounds like you toast to and fro right now, and you're trying to play semantics. And those are the games you don't want to play up here, brother. So I'm asking you, what's your nationality? Yeah. Yeah, see, see, how, see this brother? He sees himself up there, man. And he's a child again, brother. Man. This is a mighty king right here, man. Bro, that's all I'm asking you, brother. You see yourself up here? Brother, that's all I ask you, brother. 
A nationality is a race, bro. I'm saying what nation do you dwell in? Yeah, you're American by citizenship, but what does your bloodline trace back to? I am native. What's your race? You're American by citizenship, but what does your blood trace back to? Who are you? Yeah, are you gonna answer my question? Are you gonna answer my question? Brother, are you gonna answer my question? Brother, what, what are you, brother? You see your flag on here, brother? Hey, brother, what the right, what's your race, brother? What's, what are you, brother? You see how easy that was? Can you see how easy that was? He said Pete Verdian. Pete Verdian is a Brother, I've never called us African, brother. That's your problem. I never called us African. You, you, you lying right now, brother. Now you just lied. You just lied and said I called us African. I never said we're African. Oh, brother, we're not Native American. Bro. What do you say? Listen to your sister, man. She, she, she knows what she's talking about. What, what does Native American mean? What does it mean? What does Native American mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? You claiming to be Native, so what does that terminology mean? No, 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 no. I asked you, what's up? Yo, what is the original? Yo, I remember this, brother. I remember this, brother, man. What's the original American flag? What's the original American flag? Brother, brother, there was no flag before that. There was no American flag before the American flag. No, we're not. No, we're not. God says otherwise. Give me Luke 9 and 51. Give me Exodus 8 and 33. God says otherwise. We're not together. I'm not dealing with you. The Lord's not dealing. Bring it out. In the book of Luke chapter 9, verse 51, and it came to pass when, when the time was come. So the African, the African American. Listen, we're together. Why did your people? Why did your people do this? Why did your people do this? Why did your people do this? Answer that. Why did your people do this? Your people did the white man, woman, and child did this to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Why did you do this if we equal? Hey, listen. Well, hey, listen. You see that? Oh, that was back then. That's the excuse they always want to say. That was back then. Hey, did anything change? Not at all. Let me, let me ask you something. Did you know that in 1776, when the Declaration of Independence was signed, y'all was going to the doctors and we was going to the vets like animals? Was we still equal then? We wasn't considered. We wasn't considered. Hold on. We wasn't considered human beings. We wasn't considered human beings when this country was founded and established. So get the hell out of here with that equal shit, man. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 8, verse 23. And I will put a division. And I will what? And I will put a division. What the Lord said? And I will put a division. Read. Between my people and thy people. Between who? Between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And the Lord did so. sit on that. And the Lord did so, man. The Lord put a division between his people and the rest of all the scums upon the face of the earth, man. You understand? Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Holy Bible. And you gotta deal with it. You know what I'm saying? They all we pull something out in the Old Testament and in the New Testament that the Lord's dealing with division. Show me otherwise in the scripture where we all unity and in one. Right. It ain't never gonna happen. Never gonna happen. Right. It ain't never gonna happen because the Lord is not coming. 
you understand, to bring peace on earth, but with a sword, man. Right. You understand, with a sword to gather his people up. Right. You understand, to gather his chosen people. Give me Zechariah 13 and 8. You understand? Give me Zechariah 13 and 8. Right, give me the book of Acts chapter 5, right? Verse number 30. It's the book of Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. Bring it up. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Speaking about just Israel. But the third. What the what? But the third shall be left therein. This is talking about the Israelites. Only one third of Israel is going to be saved. Right. Two thirds of Israel is going to be destroyed, and so are the rest of you heathenistic nations. Right. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Holy Bible. It is not my fault. I didn't write the Bible. Bring it up. It's the book of Acts 5 and 30. Bring it up. The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Y'all hung him to the cross. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give in repentance to Israel. To who? To Israel. To everybody. To Israel. Christ died on the cross to give repentance and remission of sins to the Israelites, man. Right. To the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. You understand? And they can't do it. There's no other nation that could deal with it for real. Right. Right? That's right. <laughs> it is, right? You want to hear what's right? Give me Revelations 13 and 9. We're going to see what's right, all right? We're going to see what's right, all right? <laughs> Are we going to see what's going to happen to the so-called white woman in the kingdom of heaven? Con? Con. Con? Con. We're about to read this white woman's future judgment out the Bible. Read. Bring it out, King. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 9. Bring it out. If any man have an ear, let him hear. How many, how many ears you got? How many ears you got? You got two? All right, so it said if any man have one, let him hear. You got two. Listen to this, little mama. He that leadeth into captivity. He that what? He that leadeth into captivity. Shall what? Shall go into captivity. Shall what? Shall go into captivity. What's her judgment? Shall go into captivity. What's going to happen to her in the kingdom of heaven? Shall go into captivity. Every white person on the earth is going to be a slave in the kingdom of heaven. Say it again. Say it again. God. Hey man, give me the book. Give me the book of uh 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 uh. uh. Give me the book of uh, 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 uh Esther, chapter seven and the last verse. Give me the book of Esther, chapter seven and the last verse. She's the sister says she's gonna lynch them like they did to us. Right. Well, let's read Israelites lynching white people out the Bible. Right. This is the book of Esther, chapter seven. Verse 10. So they hanged Haman. So they did what? So, so they, they hanged Haman. Haman. What are we doing to the white woman in heaven? So, so they, they hanged Haman. Haman. So they hanged Haman on the gallows. On the what? On the gallows. On the what? On the gallows. We're going to hang the so-called white man, woman, and child on the gallows in the kingdom of heaven. Right. We're reading that straight out the Bible, man. Our forefathers was hanging you, man. Right. Y'all took that from us. Right. Y'all ain't make hanging up. We was hanging y'all before y'all was hanging us. Right. Well, that ain't nothing new. Get the hell up out of here, man. Right. We literally the salt of the earth. Even our own mechanisms of murdering these other nations, they took from us. Right. Look how weak the so-called white man, woman, the child is, man. Right. Look how weak they are. Give me Isaiah 47 and 1, man. Look at their nation and them crumbling into pieces. She can't even handle that. She's going to be a look at her. Looking for another cigarette because all that damn stress to her dome piece, man. Right. Stress, she's stressed the hell out. She's going to be a slave in the kingdom. Right. Bring it out. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 47 and verse 1. I'm going to tell you this, though. In the kingdom of heaven, if I catch you smoking, I'm going to break that cigarette and I'm going to break you. Read. Right. Right. Come down and sit in the dust, O oh virgin daughter of Babylon. Read again. Come down and sit in the dust, O oh virgin daughter of Babylon. What's happening to America? Come down and sit in the dust, O oh virgin daughter of Babylon. I'm sitting in the damn dust right now. This is the weakest kingdom walking right now, man. Y'all got your own alliances is turning against you to bomb this damn place, man. You understand? You got the European Union, they doing their own thing. You got the BRICS Alliance, they doing their own thing. Right. You got South America, they doing their own thing, man. Right. Hey, America's not going to be standing. They, they saying the currency is supposed to run out June 1st. Right. What you going to do now, white woman? How many cigarettes you going to be on the choke on and die from now, white woman? Right. Not damn one. 
Give me the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse number 19. Bring it up. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse number 4. Uh, verse number four. Right? They don't. They can't deal with the scripts, man. Like the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, especially not that so-called white woman choking out the sick. Bring it out. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter seven and verse nineteen. Bring it out. They shall cast their silver in the street. Shall do what? They shall cast their silver in the streets. What is coming to Babylon? They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. And what? And their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them. Read that one more time. Their, their silver, silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them. Ain't no amount of money in America gonna be able to save y'all white asses, man. What? June 1st, the money's supposed to be shut down. They just took out Mr. Cash App. The, the government is doing their own thing. It's what I'm trying to get y'all to understand before it's too late. And once it comes, ain't nobody gonna be giving a damn about the next dollar bill. Right. They're gonna be thinking about their next meal. They're gonna be thinking about how they gonna eat. Right. Give me Job chapter five, verse 22. Bring it up. This is the book of Proverbs 11 and four. Bring it up. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. Read it again. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Oh, what? But righteousness delivereth from death. Give me Deuteronomy 6 and 25. We're going to show y'all what's righteousness. Bring it up. We're going to show y'all what righteousness is, man. You understand? We're going to show y'all what delivers you from death because people have their own interpretation and perception of righteousness, right? But we're going to see what, how, what God says righteousness is, man. Bring it up. Bring it up, kid. This is the book of Deuteronomy, verse 6. I mean, chapter 6, verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our what? And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments. We do what? If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. Right? And it's our righteousness to keep and we read and, and, and we read it like that our righteousness is to keep the commandments. If you're not keeping the commandments, you're gonna get put to death. Right. Just because you don't see a damn big black man and y'all perception of big white man come from the sky with a sword and cut your head off, you think that's what it means to get put to death in the Bible. You can get put to death spiritually, sifting out the truth. You can get put to death by a strange death, like it was mentioned in Wisdom of Solomon, I believe. The 11th chapter, there's various ways to get put to death. Right. It isn't necessarily just a damn white man coming up the side with a sword, which don't even exist. You understand what I got you holding? Job 5, 22, bring it out. So nevertheless, it's our righteousness to keep these commandments and deliver us from death. Why? Because the money ain't gonna do it, man. Right, bring it out. It's the book of Job, chapter 5, verse 22. Bring it out. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Read it again. At destruction and famine, Thou shalt laugh. So it says during destruction and famine, the men of the give me Isaiah chapter uh 65 and 15. It says that destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. This ain't talking about everybody on the face of the earth. The Lord's only here for a remnant, which we brought up in uh Zechariah the first chapter. Read on King. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. We can't be afraid of the beast of the earth, because like it mentions in second Ezra. Chapter uh, 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 5 and verse 8, they're going to be changing in strange places. Right? They're going to be in the streets, in the cities. There's going to be lions walking around KP. Right? We're going to bring, I'm going to bring that up. Read on. Read that again. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. Right? Now, uh, Slot, so read verse 20. That's what I want. Verse 20. In famine he shall redeem thee. From death. Read it again. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death, and in war, from the power of the sword. Now go to uh. Now we just read verse 22. Give me Second Ezra chapter five and verse eight. So it says we're going to be redeemed from famine. Famine is when you're starving. Famine is when you got there's no food or water within the land. When you pay attention to the news, Walmart is running out of food and they're setting up FEMA camps on the rise as we speak. You understand? I got various videos of stores around my local neighborhood that are completely empty because the Lord is kicking his family up like he did in the first Egypt. He's doing now, right? Read that, King. This is the book of second Ezra chapter five and verse eight. There shall be a confusion also in many places. There shall be a what? There shall be a confusion also in many places. And the fire shall be off, sent out again. 
and the wild beast and the what and the wild beast it's a lion tiger and a bear and, and the, the wild, wild beast right? shall change their places shall what shall, shall change their, their places they're gonna change their places we ain't gonna be the only ones hungry out here you understand there's gonna be animals in the zoo in the woods hungry as hell coming out like these birds looking for food right. and if they ain't finding no zookeeper to feed them hey what do you think they're gonna feast on man they're gonna feast on you it's the book of isaiah Chapter 65, verse 13. Bring it out. <laughs> Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servant shall eat. My what? My, my servant, servant shall eat. eat. Everybody's going to eat. My, my servant, servant shall eat. eat. Be ye shall be hungry, but ye shall be hungry. But ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink. So the Lord saying his servants are going to eat and drink. Read on. But ye shall be thirsty. But ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice. Hey Amen. The servants of the Lord, we're going to be rejoicing in them. If it's the Lord's will, we part of that number. Read on. But ye shall be ashamed. But ye shall be ashamed. And Joel, the second chapter, says to never be ashamed, man. You understand? So, the Lord's going to feed his servants during famine and destruction, man. Right? When all that money's cracking down, man. You understand? And not everybody's going to be able to make it. Right? Read that, man. We're going to see who the Lord's servants are. That's the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 1. No. Yet, yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant. Read it again. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant. Who's going to be eating and drinking during famine and destruction? Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant. Hey, Amen. And Jacob is the servant of the Lord, the so-called black Hispanic and Native Americans, man. Right. Where we're the one who's going to be eating and drinking during the times of famine and destruction, man. Right. You understand? And not no other nation if it's the Lord's will. You understand? Right, give me the book. No, no praise, no praise. Hey, you with the glasses over there. With the hat, with the gray hat. Get him. I got one question for you. Question of the day. Question of the day. Fact of the day, you going into slavery. Fact of the day. Hey, it is what it is. Uh, that nigga gonna be polished nicely. It is what it is. Uh, pull him over there on the bike, man. It's fun time. Bye, this is the fuck fun time, man. Jesus! This is... Fuck you, yo. You shoot me, you shoot me, you shoot me. Don't do that. The Lord said, thou shalt not make riches of those who are not proud of you. Hey, I got a question. Mad, man. No, I was trying to figure out what scripture I said. He said, what, 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 what he said, what scripture? He done said, oh, scripture, I mean. Maybe Deuteronomy 4 and 2. Girl, I'm really listening. What about you? There's a book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 2. Ye shall not add unto the word. Shall what? Ye shall not add unto the word. Thou shalt not take a picture. Ye shall not add unto the word, which I command you, neither shall ye diminish out. From it, hey brother, that ye may keep the commandment of the Lord your God, which I command you. Hey man, we gotta keep the commandments. Hey brother, come in, come here real quick. Cousin, cousin. Hey, real fast, the brother talking. No, no, no. I respect all. Oh, don't play with God, please, because I'm lit right now and I'm not gonna lie. Cuz, don't play. Cuz, are we playing with God? I'm lit right now. Like, with what? You drunk? Let's go, let's go. He can still talk. I got this one. This, this, this is fair. This is fair. But no. Give me a. Uh, Oh, hey brother, yeah. cause hey, you brother. can't run, cause hey, hey, hey. Listen, you can't listen, run, listen. brother. You said don't play with Jesus boy. today. You okay. can't run. Fear, I'm not. Stop, stop playing with me. Like I told you, you're gonna learn something, nigga. No matter how old you are, you learn something new I'm about to cry right now. I'm about to cry right now. Get, get the verse together. Come on. Don't take too long now. Hey.
Bring out Leviticus 18.22. Hold it up. Hold it up. Give me Ecclesiastes 7 and 29, man. Uh, now you're going too far. Oh. Now you're going too far. Hey, the brother didn't even read nothing yet. Yeah, he's, I, I am already involved in the scripture. He's going too far. I ain't running from it, but I'm running from it. And I'm not even gonna lie. Just read it so I can get off the spot later. Hey, brother, to listen to the, the listen. All right, we got you. This is the book of First Peter, chapter 5 and verse 8. Be sober. Be what? Be, Be sober. sober. Read it again. Be, Be sober. sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Doing what? Seeking, seeking whom he may devour. devour. What happened to this brother? Seeking, seeking whom he may devour. Hey, Satan done devoured you. You lit on a, on a Sabbath day, brother. It doesn't matter. Says who? You are God. Doesn't God says otherwise, brother. The, the little piece of me said it doesn't matter. Brother, but yeah, what did God I'm, say? About to make me cry what did God say, brother? I am fucking up. Like, let it go. Oh, no, I have to help you, brother. That's how I show I love you. I got to tell you, you you messing up, man. That's how I show I truly love you. Ain't that your little cousin? So as your little cousin, how am I supposed to show you that I love you? I should be showing you better. You should be showing me better, man. You, should, you absolutely should. It's 1970. Come on, y'all. They're about to tear me up right now. They're about to tear me up. Right this is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 17. Bring it out. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Read it again. Thou, Thou shalt, shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. heart. Hey, brother, we don't hate you. Believe it or not, we the number one niggas out here to show you that we love you, brother. Right. You understand? Read on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Do what? Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. And rebuking you is showing you the commandments of the Lord, brother. Right. Rebuking you is showing you where you're going wrong, and we helping you get on the right path, King. Okay? You see what I'm saying? So we the complete opposite of hating. When we read these scripts, it's because the Lord brought you back here today, brother. You understand? You my older cousin, and you said it yourself. You're supposed to be a role model for me. Right. You understand? Not me for you. Right. So we got to get you on the right team, King. Okay? You see what I'm saying? And that's keeping these commandments to the most high. Right? It's the Sabbath day and, and you're getting lit at KP. I, I don't know, brother. You gotta put that away, brother. You see what I'm saying? You you, you running away from me? I'm not running. I just need to sit down for a second. Alright, man, read bring that up. Oh, Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 29. Lo, this only I have I found that God hath made man upright. God did what? God has made man upright. Uh, he made him sideways. God has made man upright. Upright means straight. But they have sought out many inventions. But they did what? But they have sought out many inventions. What is dealing with the same of your with the same kind of your own in terms of gender wise? But they have sought out many inventions. You see you seeking out things that you're not supposed to be seeking. Hey cousin! Cousin! <laughs> What's going on? Probably still me now. Hey, sis, go over there with the red hair. Let me ask you one question. Is this going again? I don't know if I was hurt. Hey man. Wait. <laughs> oh, oh, I was breaking loose, man. <laughs> you understand? I had you holding that uh, Ecclesiastes. Give me Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 9. Give me Romans chapter uh Give me Romans chapter 2 and verse 8. Give me Proverbs 28 and 9. You got runners over here, man, They're running away from the word, man. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 28 and verse 9. No. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. He that what? He, he that, that turneth, turneth away his, his ear from, from hearing, hearing the, the law. law. Even his prayers shall be 
an abomination. Even his what? Even, Even his, his prayers, prayers shall be an abomination. abomination. So for anybody that turns the ear away from this Bible, it, the Lord's going to turn his ear away from you, man. Right. If you turn your ear away from the Bible, because the Lord's going to turn his ear away from you, so why are you running from me? You don't. It's the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 8. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, do what? And do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Good, right there. You can hold that, right? So, hey, you got you know what I'm saying. Once again, we got another precept on people turning their ear away from the Lord, man. Right? Bring that out, King. This is the book of Second Edges, chapter nine and verse ten. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me and they have what and have not known me and they that have loathed my law and they that what and they that have loathed my law is the two third and they that have loathed my law freedom while they had yet liberty while they had what while they had yet liberty freedom freedom and when as yet place of repentance place of what place of repentance everybody don't got place of repentance read on was open unto them, understood not. Understood what? Understood not. But despised it. But what? But despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. After what? After death by pain. So our people, hey, she saw. Let me get her. She saw. Let us get her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I think that's just hey man, so the Lord is saying the same must know it after death, but hey. Hey, hey. shut up, Bob. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you a question real quick. You, I'm not gonna bite, I'm not gonna bite. Two seconds. First off, what's your nationality, man? You white, black, Hispanic? What is your dad? He's a white man. Mom Spanish. Nah, my dad's Puerto Rican. My mom. Your dad's Puerto Rican. What about your grandfather? Puerto Rican on your dad's side, right? So come here. Let me holler at you real quick. Israelite, shut up. So check this out, man. If your dad is truly a Puerto Rican, like you say, you know, yeah, you would that would make you an Israelite according to the Bible. I say you got a cross on your neck. You got a cross on your arm. You believe God? No? So why you got all that on your body? So you, so you tell it. Give me, pro, give me Proverbs 14, Psalms 14 and 1. He's bucked up. Give me Psalms 14 and 1. I'm just doing dumb shit. Hey, yo, so, give me Leviticus 19 and 27. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 14 and verse 1. A fool has said in his heart, there is no God. There is what? There is no God. Yeah, a fool saying it in his heart, there is no God, man. Only fools don't believe in God. How could you not believe in God? Like, you just gotta look. How could you not believe in the Lord, man? Hey, which, uh, 1927. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 27. You don't want to believe in the Lord, but do what all the Christians do and put crosses all over his body. That nigga's a bug out. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 26. No. Verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh. Ye shall not do what? Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. Nor do what? Nor print any marks of mark upon you. What's that, too? Nor print any marks upon you. Hey, the Lord's telling you not to do that. 
and he's over here getting just tattoos that mean nothing to him. How do you not believe in God, but you got the number one thing that so-called all people who believe in God have? Or, or worship. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Hey, stop fighting with that Edo, my brother. You'll kill him. Right? Call, call over here, man. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Uh, let me song. Give me Psalms 149. Luke 17 and 10. It's the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 10. Bring it out. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We are what? We are unprofitable servants. Are we the mightiest men in the world. We are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. We have what? We have done that which is our duty to do. Right? God, and we come out here every Friday and Saturday to you know, do our duty, man. Right? Our duty is to wake up and bring back home the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You understand? And we're unprofitable servants, man. You understand? We're doing this for y'all, man. This ain't for us. Once we just get up out of here. You understand? But this is for y'all, man. This is for y'all salvation. Right. And we're trying to give y'all or show y'all how to gain eternal life, like in Matthew the 19th chapter. Right. You understand? Y'all had a question? All right, bring it up. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 149 and verse 5. Yeah. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Read it again. Let the saints be joyful in glory. One more time. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Read on. Let them sing aloud upon their bed. Read. Let the high prices of God be in their mouth. And a two-edged sword. And a what? And a two-edged sword. And a what? And a two-edged sword. Read in their hand. To do what? To execute vengeance. To do what? To execute vengeance. One more time. To execute vengeance. Upon who? Upon the heat. Upon who? Upon the heat. Upon who? Upon the heathen. And punishment upon the people. And what? And punishment upon the people. What? To bind their kings with chains. To do what? To bind their kings with chains. And their nobles with fetters of iron. What's heaven? And their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them judgment. Written. This honor have all his saints. Pray thee. The Lord Yahweh. Praise he who? Praise he who? Praise he who? Praise he who? Call on Yahweh. Call on Yahweh. Call on Yahweh. Call on Yahweh. Death to America. Death to America. Death to Rhode Island. Death to Rhode Island. Death to America. Death to America. Death to KP. Death to KP. Call on Yahweh. 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 Call on